Hey folks and welcome back. Now today we're going to be covering the recent Project Zomboid blog update, the Thursdoid. And amongst other things, we were given a look at some of the upcoming plans for hunting, animal behavior, and late game crafting in Build 42. So it's a juicy one this time. If you enjoy the video or find it entertaining, do consider dropping it a like. It massively helps get the video in front of more people, or you can subscribe to the channel for more Zomboid info, guides, and gameplay. So the dev Let's kick off this update by welcoming in the new players to Project Zomboid that have been getting into the game thanks to the Steam Summer Sale discount. And if you happen to be one of those people, thanks for stopping by the channel and I hope you've been enjoying your experience so far. We then go into a quick note about the release of 41.72. The team are looking to get this pushed out to unstable beta build as soon as possible. The holdup being on account of vehicle physics when partnered with players of high ping, either in the same vehicle or a nearby vehicle to the player. The rubber banding is a bit too much to be playable, so the developers are hoping to rectify this before it releases. I did a video fairly recently on what's coming for 41.72 if you haven't heard about what's in that update just yet, which I'll leave in the description and on the end screen of this video if you want to check that out as well. Now, in addition to all that was covered in that video, the developers at Indie Stone have also announced some new things that are going to be added to the list for 41.72. Firstly, Polish to the in-game cooking and recipes in Project Zomboys thanks to new team member Blair Al Gol. He'll be filling in illogical gaps, expanding current recipes, and making foodstuffs previously absent from the crafting system. There's also some under-the-hood changes to foraging on the way, meaning that the game will be able to recognize polygonal foraging zones on the map rather than the more inaccurate squares and rectangles it currently works from. The next thing coming to 41.72 is improved farms and farmsteads, including scarecrows that can be dressed up much like mannequins, improved rich district housing in Louisville, and new tile sets for decoration of housing are coming to the game as well. So with that all covered, we can get into build 42, and I'm super excited to talk about this. There's quite a lot of dialogue from both RJ and Turbo, who are working on some incredible upcoming features. I'll be summarizing here, but if you want to see what they have to say in full, I'll leave a link to the original post in the description. So, first up is Turbo, who gives us a bit of an insight into what Build 42 will bring to crafting in Project Zomboid. He states that there will be new professions, new items, a crafting tree, and profession workstations coming to the game. Now, the big thing for me in this section, though, is the RPG-esque crafting changes. The stats of input items may influence the attributes of an output item, and there will be more variable attributes added to crafting items that are impacted by the skill of the craftsman that produces it. The example given in Turbo's rather insightful dialogue is a blacksmith making a hammer using a wooden tool handle and a hammerhead as its inputs. The wooden tool handle may have a quality and a condition attribute with values that are based on the skill of the carpenter who made them, and even a quality from the wood used to make the tool handle. Likewise, the hammerhead will have similar attributes based on the skill of the blacksmith that made it, along with the attributes of the iron used to craft it. Mixed in with all of this, we're then adding the skill of the crafter, and then there will be a random element to make sure not everything is the same, which opens up the need for multiple crafting attempts to forge something truly masterwork in quality. Turbo is working on an attribute system to make this all possible, as well as this system being able to be transferred to the game's existing crafting systems as well. So Turbo gives us one last example using a shotgun trap and how the trap being triggered would affect the item, as well as how the shotgun could be removed from the trap, which I've left on screen for you to have a read if you want to pause the video here rather than me talking through it all in detail. So this brings us to RJ's section of the dev blog, which was equally, if not more, interesting, covering the intricacies of animal behavior and how it will impact the average survivor. RJ starts by reminding us that in Project Zomboid, nothing really exists off the screen screen of a survivor. It just exists in the meta, where the game calculates certain movements and outcomes ready for when a player re-enters that area. For animals, however, the system needs to work a little bit differently to the usual. Whilst the player is travelling elsewhere, the game itself needs to remember certain aspects about animals that it wouldn't have to worry about with zombies. Things like age, hunger, thirst. Things that aren't an issue for a zombie, but keep these animals alive. Circumstances change for these animals whilst you aren't around 
child, and they will most likely end up dead by the time you come back. RJ then stresses that there's going to be a lot of animals on the map too, and whilst they aren't sure on their final list 100% yet, the team have already got models for rats, large birds, squirrels, deer, and domesticated animals. So there's a risk that when they're properly streamed, it might get too intensive for a CPU. Now to avoid this problem, RJ has coded in a system that allows readings for stats like hunger and thirst to be taken every hour from animals. The next statement both made me laugh and explained why it's necessary to do this, and this is a direct quote. Realistically, you'll likely only have one or two cows, but if you want to breed rats for some explicable reason, you could end up with a ton of them. We don't want players with 100 plus animals having their stats updated every tick, or things could melt. So for those that are planning on making a post-apocalyptic rat farm, make sure to provide plenty of food before you go out on that loot run. The next part of RJ's segment is incredibly interesting, focused around animal migration and hunting. The essentials of this segment are that animals are indeed going to migrate, following set paths around the map that have been coded into the meta of Project Zomboid. There are a plethora of paths that they can take, all with nodes for eating and drinking, etc., along the way. Basically, this means we won't necessarily be able to predict where a herd of deer is going to be going at any given moment purely from memory. RJ does however mention that the dev team can perhaps provide loot items that detail rough hunting trails on our map. Now sticking with a herd of deer, it's also mentioned that these animals will have complete families. That includes bucks, does and fawns for our deer herd. Now not only this, but your choice of which one to hunt will impact that herd. Let's say for example you kill a buck. That herd will not be able to breed until they find another buck to replace the one they lost. On a similar token, you may not want to kill a fawn for meat as it may be too young, or you may choose to keep a pregnant female alive so it can produce young for the herd. These are all things the avid hunter will need to consider before choosing their final target. And as a final note, RJ moves on to a brief comment about tracking in Project Zomboid. And whilst it's not expected to be ready for build 42, the team are looking at tracking animals via excrement trails that they leave behind, as well as its freshness to help detail proximity to the animal. So we'll have a pretty detailed system by the time it gets fully implemented. That's it from me in this one, folks. But before I go, some of you may have seen that I've been playing some 10 years later runs on streams and in videos recently. As of Sunday the 3rd, our Patreon server will be running a mod pack dedicated to The Last of Us, dropping you into a version of Kentucky that nature has already claimed for its own. It'll be a serious challenge, but I hope you'll consider joining us. And the link for the Patreon is in the description, and once again, a massive thank you to all of my existing patrons that will be playing on the server with us. Thanks everyone, and I see you all in the next one.